After the success of Chandrayaan, Aditya L1 is the new uh, moment of glory for ISRO. What does this really mean for the country? Joining us to discuss that, Minister for Science and Technology, Dr. Jitendra Singh. So thank you so much. Congratulations uh, to you and your team for Aditya L1. Can you help us understand, sir, uh, what is the position right now? It will take four months to reach the designated spot, but a huge moment for the country for ISRO. Yeah, yeah, of course. It will take uh, around four months. But as you said in your opening remarks, uh, what does it mean for the country? Of course, as I said, the, 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 my first remark that uh, sunshine moment for India, which became quite a popular uh, day. But having said that, I think now what I also was trying to mention that day, and which I wish to reiterate, is that it has also established the whole of science and whole of nation approach, which Prime Minister Modi has been seeking to reiterate from time to time. And you would recall that ever since he took over in 2014, he's been uh, uh, emphasizing time and again that the age of silos is over, and mm -hmm. rightly so, and we have to integrate. So I think this is a mission which, of course, uh, the ISRO is credited for having uh, executed. But at the same time, there are more than a dozen or so institutions across the country. Mm -hmm. Uh, beginning from the Indian Institute of Astrophysics in Bangalore, the National Aerospace Laboratories, the CSIR lab in Nagpur, the Tata Research Institute, Tata Memorial Research Institute, right. all the IITs, particularly the IIT Khadakpur and IIT Madras. So all of them have in one way or the other contributed, which has also given it a sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one reason you find the entire nation getting involved uh, ever since uh, the opening up of the space sector has happened to all these stakeholders. And uh, one aspect which has not been that widely reported is that even on this day, uh, day before yesterday, when uh, Aditya launching happened, there were as many as about 10,000 people to s see the uh, you know, launching, uh, in, 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 uh, right there present in the premises. Right. Now, some, some, this was something unimaginable, unheard of till a few years ago because you were even forbidden from uh, peeping inside the gates. Mm -hmm. And uh, very soon they are also now trying to uh, have a more systematic conducted tour kind of an arrangement. So I think this opening up of the space sector has not only involved all the stakeholders, but it's also made all sections of society understand what's happening there right. and given them a sense of esteem. Mm. So, which I, I think goes parallel to the kind of... Uh, ascent of India's esteem in the world arena. Mm -hmm. So, like, like we were discussing, uh, after NASA, the European uh, Center, and China yes. and Japan, we are only the fifth country which is now uh, going uh, for an observatory or some experiments Absolutely. around Absolutely. the sun. What made the political leadership think that this is the moment that you should invest because not every country is doing it? No, I think uh, without uh, being modest, I would again have to mention a very bold and a courageous decision that was taken by the government of India headed by Prime Minister Modi in 2019. Hmm. We had actually got used to working with our constrained resources. And the conditioning of the mind had happened to such an extent that we even stopped demanding or stopped imagining that it hmm. could be otherwise. Hmm. But it was anomalous in the sense that it, 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 it was obstructing our growth in spite of the fact that we had a huge human resource available, a lot of talent there, a lot of potential there, but we were constrained of resources and we were not involving the other stakeholders. And after 2019, when the new policy came in, the private participation began to happen in a big way. I think statistically speaking, it's very significant that in 2019 or so, we just had four startups mm. at ISRO. Today, we have more than 150 and some of them have already turned into entrepreneurs are, are on the verge of uh, becoming entrepreneurs. We have a huge investment coming from the industry. That means the industry was waiting to invest. The human talent was waiting to invest. But we were not allowing it to happen at the, at the cost of uh, hampering our own collective growth of the nation. Mm -hmm. So which is after And now with the National Research Foundation having come in, which is a huge uh, participation of the industry, the academia, uh, also the social scientists, I think it's going to be a wider pool. So that, that's something that which caught my eye also. When we talk about success stories in India, we often talk about IITs and IIMs. But the people who are responsible for these success stories from smaller centers, BTECs, BEs, uh, from Jamia or from a Kerala University or even from Manipur, the kind of people who are involved in this success story also talks of a new age India. Yes, yes and uh, also to add to what you are saying, the woman power. We keep talking of women participation. We 
sound very, you know, try to tend to be very noble and patronizing while saying that we should encourage women. But we don't realize they've already taken over. They're leading us. Mm -hmm. So when I say I should encourage women participants, that means I'm, I'm not, I have some hesitation to accept her leadership. Even in this Aditya mission, the project director is a woman, Nigar Sharji. Mm. She's a woman. Mm. I mean, she's uh, leading everybody else. So we have actually, India as a whole has graduated from that level to the other level, from the level of women participation to the women leadership. Mm. Uh, similarly, in the earlier mission, the Chandrayaan, our assistant uh, director or the dep number two director mm. was Kalpana. Mm. So I think that is another aspect of it which could not come out in the open because they were functioning behind a veil of secrecy. Mm. And now all these things have come out. And then the way people are participating in it, you know, videos are going viral about how the ISRO chief traveling on an aircraft is being welcomed by people. On the streets, he's become as big a superstar as a Bollywood actor perhaps. No, I think uh, I said that also in the parliament once. Mm. The scientific fraternity owes it to Prime Minister Modi. He has given esteem to science and the scientists. Mm. Now, for example, uh, a scientific success story or even a scientific project hardly found a uh, space in the mainstream media. Mm. Even if you had a launching from Sri Harikota, it would be reported in a small a remote corner or a remote column of a remote newspaper and nobody would either notice it or even if they noticed, they couldn't figure out where exactly is Sri Harikota yes. uh, located on the surface of this earth. Yes. Now, you have the channels. 24 hours reporting it, You're, you find, actually you sometimes find, find, feel short of the panelists. The other day I was talking to one of the former chairpersons. I said uh, this Aditya and Chandrayaan have uh, uh, enlightened me to another aspect. There's so many experts coming on the TV channels to say and, I, and many of them we don't know. So he, he responded telling me, sir, you said you don't know who they are. Sometimes I don't know what they are saying. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is, but in a way, the... the, the the better part of it is that there is a kind of an awakening and the urge yes. to know about it. In fact, so let, me, let me tell you, this interview is happening on public demand. There is so much interest in uh, yes. what ISRO is doing. People are wanting to get more information. And, and, and there are so many things to learn from each other because India is such a heterogeneous country, rich in its uh, uh, diversity also. Mm. For example, ISRO follows a work culture which is, I think, kind of a role model for others too. They work as a family because it's a small island and... They never superannuate, they don't retire, even after retirement officially, they continue to associate themselves with the mission. So they take it as a life mission. Now, mm. you would have seen uh, all these days because te television was giving it a wide coverage. Mm. All the former chairmen are there, yes. all the retired scientists are So they remain closely associated with the mission and then they follow a kind of an unspoken SOP. Before every launch, they pay a obeisance at Tirupati. Mm -hmm. After every launch, they celebrate it by distributing a laddu. So I think this is a purely professional culture. Also, also signifying the, the, the ideal blend of India's heritage tradition with the most updated scientific cutting-edge technology, right, which right. is which is second to none in the world today. So we, we've spoken about the euphoria and we, the euphoria was there to witness, but were there some tensed moments when uh, Aditya L1 was launching? We were told that for maybe a few moments we lost our eye on the satellite and there were some nervous no, moments. No, that uh, was expected. I mean, that's hmm. an intervening gap hmm. where you lose eye. But of course, you, if it goes beyond that, then it becomes a matter of concern. Hmm. But I think compared to Aditya, it is the Chandrayaan which could have uh, also, which could have posed more nervous moments. Mm. Particularly, personally speaking for me, when it moved out of the Earth's orbit into the lunar orbit. Mm. Because it's just like you're driving down the highway and then suddenly you have to change the track. So you have to move into another track without compromising midway or without, uh, you know, causing a mishap right. midway. Right. So, because it, 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 it says goodbye to this gravitational path and then looks forward to be moved on to the other path. Mm. But that also is a, a, is a compliment, a tribute to India's scientific talent. They use these gravitational natural forces to save on fuel. Mm. It's like, you know, you are driving on the highway and you are short of pocket. You try to put the neutral gear when you find the sliding down of the road happening. Uh, so you save on fuel. Yes. So that's why, I mean, that is the, exactly precisely the... A simplest uh, way of explaining the difference between this mission, the Chandrayaan mission, and the simultaneous Russian mission, mm. which just went like a bullet train mm. because it mm. didn't have to, uh, you know, compromise on right. cost. Right. So it cost sixteen thousand 
we cost 600 mm. and aditya less than 400 yes yeah, so, uh, so you setting a precedent also uh, you know a lot of countries may not have looked at space sector exactly. because of the cost Absolutely. so by putting it at less than 400 are you also making the world you know look up and take notice that this can yeah, be yes, done we, we are i think we have pioneered that cost effective missions mm. is something that i wrote the other day mm. we have pioneered the culture of cost effective space missions and not at the half the cost it's just 10% cost mm. now can you imagine uh, aditya happening with just uh, about 380 crore I mean, that's I mean, how much gadar has grossed apparently uh, at bollywood uh, i was told that is also the fee of uh, some of the film stars yes. or, or maybe the and the movie is made at a higher cost mm. uh, 6000 uh, uh, 600 crore for uh, uh, chandrayaan uh, chandrayaan so that way but that now i think more important to uh, the, the subject of research would be mm. how is this happening it's not only jogad they say this indian jogad no it's not that it's a huge amount of cerebral investment going into that mm. for months and months the homework is done how we would move the vehicle where we would find it you know being supported by other forces to move on so that we would cut down on the cost it's not that easy where you are investing very heavily in the terms of the financial funding you are not putting cerebral investment to the same extent so i think and i have said that right from the beginning india was very rich in human resource right from the times of sara bhai that's why the sara bhai had the courage conviction confidence uh, way back in late 1960s hmm. when uh, america already landed on the surface of the moon in 1969 to to compete with these uh, two nations the the most uh, uh, the earliest nation in the space sector is then soviet union and the USA, usa so i think this is again which means the talent was there it was waiting to happen yes and it happened at the very first opportunity after 2019 so, so what next now? Can you help our viewers understand Aditya has been launched but it will take some time before it actually reaches the point that it has to. What will be the uh, timeline? What will be the challenges? What is it that you are looking out for? For Chandrayaan, you were looking out uh, at, at the shift from one orbit to the other. Oh no, of course, that, that, was, that was a sensitive moment as I said. But the, mm -hmm. the, in Chandrayaan also, the, mm -hmm. the other sensitive uh, moment is towards the end. Mm -hmm. you know, suddenly, the speed comes down from 6,000 km per hour to just about 200 km per hour, two of the engines get shut down and when just about 150 or 100 meters away from the surface of uh, earth, then you can't give any, send any command. Yes. So yes. you leave it to the wisdom of Vikram. Mm. So that is the actual test, how well or not well you have uh, uh, trained this boy yes. Uh, yes. to decide. And uh, then uh, the signals are received through sensors. Uh, through cameras and then he has to negotiate within a radius of which just about two, kilo, two kilometers. But the problem is that the algorithm is such that the time span is fixed. Mm. So if he is not able to make up his mind mm. within a fixed span, then it's put off to the other date. It's not like aircraft here because the pilot is there. So he keeps rotating mm. over the skies mm. uh, over the Indira Gandhi airport. It's not that. So there, then, so that, that, that's a very t uh, sort of a moment of uh, anxiety. But this time it just went down. It didn't even have to, you know, negotiate. So that was a very, very smooth and instant uh, landing that happened. Now, but the other part of it, what you are looking for in Aditya in case, see, it is going to the L1 point. Mm. Again, that is going to the point which has been very, very diligently worked out because there it will stand on its own. Mm. Mm. It'll be between the two planetary uh, forces, uh, this is a position where uh, there will be an optimum uh, balance to keep uh, this uh, moving. And one of the satellites would be moving in a manner that it will be able to picturize uh, sun all through. Mm. So, and just as Chandrayaan has already, as I said even before it landed, it has started sending uh, information about minerals, uh, about oxygen, hydrogen, now maybe about the seismicity or the quick uh, vulnerability and uh, also the atmosphere of uh, moon. Similarly, Aditya also, because you could not, it, it is also, as you rightly said, a kind of space laboratory because we could not have studied some of the nuances of sun from Sitting that out. far a distance. Mm -hmm. So we are moving up to 1.5 million kilometers, which is also, of course, a very small distance, just about 10% of the total distance between Earth and sun. So that way, the other way, somebody asked me, will it not get burnt away? I said, no, no. <laughs> it's just, if, it, if sun is, for example, 100 kilometers away, we are traveling only 10, 10 kilometers, kilometers, just to get closer. But there, it will have the opportunity to study the solar 
phenomena, the magnetic phenomena, because uh, and this is a very popularly asked question. Mm. What do you gain out of it? Yes. And question to which different answers have been given. And even those who give the answers would say that we have not been able to satisfy mm. because, because it's a very difficult question. And so therefore, uh, I'll just try to explain to it, though I'm not sure whether I'll be able to. But I think in the simplest terms, the sun's phenomena are twofold. Uh, they could be destructive mm. if not 